Welcome to the Pew! The Pew! The hairspray edition of the Pew. <laughs> um, okay, so what are we talking about today? We are going to talk about how your trip to uh, the art gallery where you saw oh, Joe Harris's yes. works. Well, no, they weren't works, they were pick paintings of him, right? Yes, done by his very sexy boyfriend from Scotland. Uh, his name is Juano, J-U-A-N-O, that would be Juano, right? I guess, yeah. Um, um, but he's Scottish, and um, he's uh, very talented. The paintings um, are uh, all of Joey. What it gallery was, was it at? It was at that gallery that it's in Chelsea, and it's on, I think, 20th Street, and it, where it doubles in the daytime. It's that very trendy place that in the daytime it's a eye clinic, <laughs> and at night it's an art gallery. Um, I have no idea. Uh, but um, the eye clinic art gallery. And um, it was like so a So you can get your eyes fixed and then look at the art afterwards. It was like a shrine to Joey, and um, Joey looked so fucking amazing. I have in the picture. In the paintings or in person? Well, he looked, in the paintings he was deified. I mean, it was like, you know, but, um, and they were, Yeah, you kind of said that they reminded you of Pierre and Gilles. Pierre and Gilles, yes. And they, uh, they were- Or the French artists. Yes. And also that there are a lot of like, who's the, uh, the, um, the, is it, is it the, the Hindu god with the, all of the arms? Uh, that, there could be a lot of different Hindu well, you gods. the blue ones. Well, Krishna is often. Yes, it was sort of Krishna-ish, with like lots of blue arms and, um, and the docks here and all that. And um, I have pictures, which I will show you up. Um, but the crowd was, Joey and I were talking about this too. Whereas at one, in you know, 1984, 1985, all of New York City was like this, now it was kind of like shrunk to like that, this little room. Like all of those those people uh, were like shrunk into this little room, that's all of this. You know? well, what did I, I see, I don't believe that. Wouldn't you just say that maybe that's just well, no, these are the old from his yes, scene yes, exactly. Who are not yes. dead yet? Yes, these are the they're the old ones, but they were really they were like so intimidatingly fabulous. I mean, like it really felt like I was at Area in 1985. I mean, it was. But was it though? Because I remember I went to this show uh, where Linda Simpson uh, showed photographs of the scene back in the day, and there were people there from the East Village scene of the late 80s. And at times I was shocked at how old some of the people from back then looked. And you mean looked back then? No, looked when I saw them at this gallery. Right yeah, now, well, they're, they're all like, down. I think it was like April or March of last year. And yeah, they're old, like they're in their 60s. But in my mind's eye, I still think of them yeah. as they looked in the yeah. 80s. So well, when I'm faced with the reality, it's still, it's this dissonance that's shocking. Not when I, not Joey. I mean, like. Joey looks like he did. I mean, he almost like Madonna and Suzanne Barsh, he, he who look better now than they did 30 years ago. Joey is like that. He looks like really amazing. You've seen pictures. Um, uh, he looks like, you know, I mean, he must be really living a good life. But the show was really amazing. The pr the artwork was not only well done and well crafted, but outrageously inexpensive. Uh, and I asked Joey about that, and Joey said it's because they want every, you know, they want people to be able to afford to have it, and you know. How long is the show going to be up? I don't know, but um, it was a really great show, and um, um, Michael Musto, Michael Musto was there. He was there for like two seconds. I think I frightened him. <laughs> for some reason, the minute he saw me, he turned around and walked out. I don't know what that could be about, um, but um, it was a great show. All right, stay tuned for more. We sure are cute for two ugly people I don't see what anyone can see in anyone else yeah, sure. This is a laundry! No. Welcome, Welcome back. back to Pew! To Pew! Where bitches want to know. Or do they want to know? Yes, John Rutherford asks whether Michael and RuPaul were friends. Ooh. And if so, do you stay in contact with each other today? What an interesting question. <laughs> That's a very interesting question. I'm very interested in it. Yeah, well, I know that you guys were kind of friendly back in the day because uh, RuPaul used to work at some of your parties. Uh, RuPaul worked at all of my parties. I, and I thought we were very friendly too. I was very friendly to RuPaul. I thought I was very friendly to RuPaul. I was, she literally I made was, thousands of dollars off of you. She did. Um, and I uh, was drinking at the time, and I was using drugs at the time. So I probably 
did things and said things that were not so friendly. I know that I found out later on- Did she, you make her drink your pee? No, I did not make her drink my pee. But I found out later on that she was upset with me um, after uh, I hired Larry and Loma to do the Celebrity Club and I didn't hire her. And I didn't hire her because she wasn't living in New York at the time, she was living in Atlanta. Um, and But she had taken offense to it and Larry T and Loma asked me to buy her a plane ticket to come to New York so that she could live and work for me a tunnel. And I did do that, um, but, um, and then she worked for me. And then I, again, I found out later on that the whole time she worked for me, she didn't like me. So I don't, I, you know, like I said, when I was drinking and doing drugs, I was probably, she says that I, you know, did something to her one night <laughs> that she didn't like. But, um. <laughs> Just one night? What was it? Igor, she says that I spit in her mouth. Oh. But I, that could be a turn off. It, it could be. Um, I spit in a lot of people's mouth. Um, in fact, just last week I spit in people's mouth. Um, yeah, but that was that was a sex hookup. He'd ask me. He'd ask me to spit in his mouth. I don't, nobody in the clubs asked for that. Um, that's not true either. But um, but RuPaul did not ask for it. And um, now what she calls this bit, I call it rule. And I know there's not a big difference, but there is a difference. Wait, are you saying it was a drool it was, malfunction? It was a drool malfunction. And uh, whereas the spit carries with it a connotation of intention and maliciousness. And projection. And project, like projectile vomiting. Whereas drool is sort of an involuntary action. Right, because I'm fucked up. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to give, give you an air And I have no... I have no responsibility for this because I am, it's an involuntary action, kind of like a spasm. Right. So I had a. Well, you were pretty. Spastic. I had an involuntary spasm while I was. I think you're having one now. Kissing RuPaul. <laughs> no, she said. She said I waved the money. She said, "Can I have my my, my nice pay?" And I waved the money. She says, "I waved the money in her face," and I said, "You can have it after you kiss me." <laughs> And she kissed me, and I had an involuntary spasm. <laughs> a drool. A drool. That somehow projected it's, from your It didn't mouth. project. It was drooled out of the corner of my mouth, and somehow became attached to RuPaul's mouth when RuPaul <laughs> leaned over to kiss me. And then she called that a spit. She says that I spit in her mouth, which I did not do. Drool, dribble, spit. So um, I'll let the pewers. So I thought I thought we were friends and I was friendly, but apparently we were not. Pewers, you decide. Was it dribble, spit, drool, or an involuntary spasm? See you next time. Bye.